Looking for another fun way to use essential oils? Then you will love using them to make bath bombs. Bath bombs are so much fun, but store-bought ones are typically filled with ingredients we'd rather not use, like SLS, fragrances, and other ingredients. Welcome to Simply Earth's first ever bath bomb week. This is the first video in a series of videos we will be sharing, teaching you how to master using essential oils to make bath bombs. I'm Katie, a certified aromatherapist and co-founder of Simply Earth, the essential oil company that teaches you how to use essential oils and sells them at an honest price. I get to be your guide to making bath bombs using essential oils with confidence and clarity. In this video, you'll learn what bath bombs actually are and get inspired by the different kinds that you can make. You'll learn how to use essential oils safely in a bath. Essential oils are concentrated and shouldn't be put directly into a bath. You're gonna get clarity from a certified aromatherapist to use essential oils safely in your bath bombs. Plus, you'll get the best tips and tricks to make the best bath bombs. You are going to be among thousands of Simply Earth Earthies who have learned how to make bath bombs successfully using these methods. So first, what are bath bombs? Before we get started, I just want to make sure that you and I are on the same page on what bath bombs are. Bath bombs are usually spherically shaped and contain citric acid and baking soda. When you drop them into a bath, they fizz creating joy. Depending on what else is added to the bath bomb, the bath bomb will spin, release colors, bubble, and or a fragrance. When you make bath bombs yourself, you get to be in charge of what the bath bomb does, how it smells, and add emotional and or skincare benefits to the bath bomb using essential oils. Here are some of the different kinds of bath bombs you can make. Aromatherapy bath bombs. These are bath bombs that use essential oils to create a calming or uplifting bath based on what essential oils you use. Body care bath bombs. Baths are a great way to support your body's natural healing process. You can, you can add essential oils for even more soothing benefits. Skin care bath bombs. These are bath bombs that use ingredients to specifically support skin care. Foaming bath bombs. Foaming bath bombs typically use SLS to create their bubbles. In all my bath bomb testing, I accidentally made a foaming bath bomb using only natural ingredients. I will share my secret with you in the next recipe in this bath bomb week series. Foaming unicorn bath bombs. Another kind of bath bomb is surprise inside bath bombs. These kinds of bath bombs have another color inside or a small toy that is revealed as the bath bomb fizzes away. Now let's get into ingredients you'll need to make bath bombs using essential oils. Every bath bomb needs baking soda, citric acid, something to slow down the fizz, and a binding agent to help keep its shape. Baking soda helps create fizz and is also soothing to the skin. Citric acid reacts with baking soda to create fizz. It also has some natural cleaning benefits. Corn starch, our filler, or similar starches, act as a filler, slowing down the fizzy reaction. It also creates a silky feeling in the tub. Carrier oils, like coconut oil and almond oil, helps bind the bath bomb together and dilutes the essential oil. Essential oils add aromas to your bath, along with emotional and physical benefits. For a list of essential oils I recommend, download the guide in the description box. Along with carrier oils functioning as a binding agent, isopropyl alcohol is also often used to help hold your bath bomb together. You can replace this with witch hazel, a tiny bit of water, or add more carrier oil in place of isopropyl alcohol. These ingredients will help you create a simple and wonderful fizzy bath bomb. To add some pizzazz to your bath bomb, you can add some of the following ingredients. Clay improves the hardness of the bath bomb. It also supports your body's circulation and has other skincare benefits. Cream of tartar also improves the hardness of a bath bomb and adds a silky feeling to the tub and can replace or partially replace citric acid as a fizzing agent. Dried flowers can be added to make your bath bomb look beautiful and add aroma. You can add Simply Earth Emulsifying Wax and this will help bind your ingredients together. It'll also help prevent lines of color forming around your tub if you are using a colorant. Epsom salt or other mineral salts help support circulation and your body's natural healing process. 
Mica powders are a fun and natural way to add color to your bath bombs. Oatmeal adds a silky feeling to the water and can soothe irritated skin. Before we make our bath bomb recipe, here are some tips. Consistency is key. If your bath bomb isn't going into the mold correctly, it probably is because the consistency of your bath bomb isn't correct. It's probably too dry. So if you're taking your bath bomb out of the mold and it doesn't seem right, check your consistency. You should be able to grab it with your hand and pack it into a ball and it should keep its shape. Some people don't use their hands and use a mixer instead. I find that using my hands works better and it's just as fast as using a mixer for mixing bath bombs. Baking soda is a fine powder that will go airborne when you add it to your mixture. This can be irritating to those with sensitive lungs. This is true of clays and mica powders or any other fine powder as well. You can wear a mask while you make bath bombs to prevent irritation. For essential oils, use a 3% dilution rate or less, which is eight drops of essential oil per tablespoon of carrier oil. You don't need a lot of essential oil to make an amazing smelling bath. You're in an enclosed space and it's easy for the aroma to become overwhelming. Humidity can be a big factor in the success or failure of bath bombs. Try not to make bath bombs on a day when it's raining. If you live in a humid environment, run a humidifier while you make your bath bombs. Otherwise, the bath bomb can react to the water in the air and react prematurely. If you have some leftover mixture, but not quite enough to make another bath bomb, you can add cornstarch until you have enough to fill the bath bomb mold. It might not fizz the same as your other bath bombs, but it'll still work. It's kind of controversial, but I like to remove my bath bombs from the mold right away, as soon as I've made them. Some people insist on letting it dry inside the mold. In my testing, this did not help my bath bombs turn out better. It was actually a letdown because I'd go to remove the bath bomb only to open the mold and have it cleave in half or crumble. I'd rather remove the bath bomb right away from the mold so that I can fix the problem by packing it differently or making sure the mixture is the correct consistency. You also need more bath bomb molds to make that process work. Sometimes people cannot get the hang of using a classical spherical bath bomb mold. That's okay. If you really have a hard time with it, just grab a silicone soap mold or baking mold instead that has individual cavities, firmly pack it into the mold and allow the mixture to fully dry inside of that mold. You want to let it dry in this kind of mold because the mold is flexible. If I try to remove it right away, I'll probably damage the bath bomb. It's only in the classic bath bomb molds that I like to remove it right away from the mold. If you're using a colorant like mica powder, it's a good idea to wipe down the tub before and after use. Colorants like to stick to soap scum on the sides of the tub and can leave behind a colorful ring. Washing the tub before use is a good way to prevent this. If your bath bomb mixture isn't turning out visually how you'd like, don't count it as a failure. You can still add your mixture to a bath for fizzy fun. If you wanna make a big batch of bath bombs, I recommend using more carrier oil or 99% isopropyl alcohol instead of witch hazel or water. Witch hazel and water will cause your bath bomb to react slightly. This is fine in small batches, but if you are making a large batch of bath bombs, you'll need to keep adding more witch hazel or water to keep the mixture the right consistency. Pretty soon your bath bomb mixture isn't going to work and it may not fizz very much in the tub because it's already reactive to the water you added. In the ingredients section of this video, I mentioned that you can use witch hazel, water, isopropyl alcohol, or more carrier oil to help bind your bath bomb together. If I'm using more carrier oil, I find that it takes more carrier oil to get to the right consistency than isopropyl alcohol. It usually will just take a couple squirts of isopropyl alcohol, whereas I might have to add a couple tablespoons of carrier oil to get to the damp sand consistency where the bath bomb will hold its shape when I hold it in my hand. So let's make some bath bombs. After we make these bath bombs, I'm gonna share with you some common problems and solutions to making bath bombs. If you've watched tutorials on the internet, you know there's tons of different ways to make bath bombs. This is how I make bath bombs successfully over and over again. 
To make this recipe, I'm going to be using ingredients from Simply Earth plus a couple from my home. I'm gonna use one tablespoon of coconut oil, three drops of lavender essential oil, quarter cup of citric acid, and Simply Earth bath bomb molds. From my home, I'm going to be using a half a cup of baking soda and a half a cup of cornstarch, along with some rubbing alcohol that I have in a spray bottle. Let's get started. The first step I like to do for making bath bombs is to pour my baking soda through a sieve. Baking soda tends to have clumps in it, which means clumps in my bath bomb. So if I put it through the sieve, it'll remove those clumps so I can get a nice even mixture for my bath bomb. I'm not adding mica powder to these bath bombs, but if I were, I'd like to do that step right now. Because the baking soda is absorbent, it helps attach to the mica powder and evenly disperse it throughout our mixture. While I move on to the next step, I'll set this aside. For my carrier oil and binding agent in this recipe, I am using coconut oil. Since I'm using solid coconut oil, I'm going to melt it first. If I were to be using a liquid carrier oil like almond oil or fractionated coconut oil, I could add my essential oils right away. I'm going to melt this to help it mix with my bath bomb mixture and help evenly dilute the essential oils. Now that that's melted, I'm going to add three drops of lavender essential oil. So now I'm gonna stir the essential oils so that it is evenly diluted in the carrier oil. Now I'm gonna add my essential oil mixture to my baking soda. I like to first whisk this together and then get it to an even consistency by hand. Now I'm gonna add the cornstarch to my mixture. If I was adding any other powdered filler, like clay or salt or oatmeal, I, could, I would add those now as well. So now I'll mix these together. And again, I'm gonna do that by hand because then I can tell with my hands that the consistency is even. Now I'm gonna check the consistency of my mixture. I'm going to squeeze it in my hand and if it holds together, it's at the right consistency. Mine's a little bit too powdery or too dry. You see how it breaks in half when I open up my hand? I want all of it to hold together. So to help it all stay together, I'm going to give it a couple sprays of 99% isopropyl alcohol. I can also use witch hazel, a tiny bit of water, or add more coconut oil or add a little bit of almond oil to this recipe. Depending on where you live, you might not have to add a binding agent. If it's a little humid out or if it's raining, probably won't have to add this. Your mixture is gonna be wet enough from the moisture in the air. So let's test it out now. I squeeze it and it holds together. This is at the right consistency. I'm now going to be adding my last ingredient to these bath bombs, a quarter cup of citric acid. I like to add citric acid last because citric acid is what makes this whole thing react. So if I were to put citric acid in right away and some water from the air got into it, the bath bomb would start reacting. I'm helping to prevent that by adding it last. So now I've got the citric acid in here, I'm gonna give it a quick stir with a spatula before I mix it with my hands. Like I mentioned in the tips for this recipe, if you have sensitive skin or have nail polish on, you won't wanna mix this by hand because the citric acid can rub away your nail polish and it can be irritating. I have sensitive skin though and it doesn't bother me, but as a precaution, it's a good idea to wear gloves. All right, so my bath bomb mixture is ready. I've added the citric acid. It has all the ingredients it needs. Before I mold this amazing bath bomb, I'm gonna recheck that its consistency is good, that it holds its shape when I squeeze it in my hand, and it does. If it didn't, if it crumbled, I would add a little bit more isopropyl alcohol. Another key part to making an amazing bath bomb is to correctly pack it into the mold. So what you need to do is to firmly but gently overfill the molds like this, packing it down lightly with your palm. And you'll wanna overfill it so that there is a slight mound in each half of the mold. 
And this is gonna help the bath bomb be packed together correctly. All right, I've got a slight mound on either side. It is gently packed and now it's time to put it together. I'm going to squeeze the bath bomb together until the edges meet, like so. All right, let's remove it. And like I mentioned in my tips, I like to do this right away. That means I can use less bath bomb molds and I know right away whether or not this bath bomb worked. Oh, it's beautiful, it works. The next step is just to set this in a safe place to totally dry out. As it dries, it'll become hard and hold its shape much better. So I'm gonna set this over here safely to dry. If you live in a humid environment, you'll wanna run the dehumidifier while these are drying out. All right, time for my next bath bomb. This recipe makes two bath bombs out of our six and a half centimeter mold size which is the size most bath bombs are. We also have a mini bath bomb mold where you can make tiny little bath bombs to put in your bath. For a mini bath bomb, this, will, this recipe will make about four. All right, it's firmly but gently packed. Each side has a little mound on it. I'm gonna put it together. And now I'm gonna remove it from the molds. Oh! and another success. I have some bath bomb mixture left. What I like to do is save that in a jar and then I've just got some fizzy bath powder I can add to my kid's bath, that's super fun. I could also add a little bit of cornstarch and fill up half of a mold to create half a bath bomb. Those are all good ways to use up any remaining bath bomb mixture. So let's talk about some common problems that can happen with bath bombs so that they don't turn out quite so beautifully. So the first one that I've already mentioned that is um, it doesn't come out of the mold correctly. Again, that comes down to consistency. If it didn't hold its shape in your hand, you need to add more isopropyl alcohol, carrier oil, witch hazel, or a tiny bit of water to it to help it hold its shape. If it comes out in two halves, that probably means that you packed it into the mold too hard. If while these are drying, all of a sudden I find that the bath bomb has crumbled, that was probably due to the bath bomb mixture not being packed in hard enough, or there was some humidity in the air and it's reacted with it, which caused the bath bomb to fizz, 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 and react and lose its shape. Another problem that can happen is that you'll find your bath bomb has grown overnight. You have created a Frankenstein creation. <laughs> when that happens, that means the bath bomb got encountered water and it started to react. So this can cause it to grow big. I find this to be more common of a problem if I leave the bath bombs in molds to dry. All of a sudden, the, when I come back, the bath bombs molds will be like this. <laughs> They'll be separated and you'll be able to see it and it just looks really funny. That means water got into the mold somehow and started to react so the bath bomb mixture expanded. Another common problem with bath bombs is humidity. Humidity can make it so that your bath bombs never dry out. I was having that problem. I made some bath bombs in the basement and for a whole weekend they didn't dry out. I put a fan near it and the next day they were dry. That, so probably the humidity was causing them not to dry out. Another problem with the humidity that I've already mentioned is it can cause them to react prematurely. So run a dehumidifier if you live in a humid environment while you're making the bath bombs and while they dry. Another common bath bomb problem is that they can leave a color around your beautiful bathtub. These won't do that because we didn't add any color to them. If we add mica powder, that can happen. To prevent that from happening, wash down the sides of your bathtub before you use your bath bomb. The mica likes to stick to soap scum on the sides of your tub. If you wash that away, there's not much for your mica to stick to. Another way to prevent that is to use just a little bit of mica powder or use Simply Earth's emulsifying wax. In my next video in this series, I'm going to teach you how to use Simply Earth's emulsifying wax to make some crazy cool bath bombs called foaming unicorn bath bombs. I hope this video has given you confidence and clarity on how to make bath bombs using essential oils. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and to share it with your friends. 
You can find our bath bomb cheat sheet, which gives you all the information in this video plus more, including my list of recommended essential oils for making bath bombs in the description box. This video is part of a series on different bath bomb recipes with Simply Earth. I'll include links to those videos in the description box. I'll see you in our next Bath Bomb Week video, Foaming Unicorn Bath Bomb.